that gives this light tonus to the low belly, that naturally comes. You don't have to kind of, that doesn't have to be a contrived thing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's just there, kind of a lift. Now, if that lift is there, there's going to be less, much less chance in my way of thinking, or my experience, of trying to hold yourself up in your shoulders. Exactly. Because there's this upward supported lifting that allows the shoulders to go, oh, okay, I'm not responsible for holding you up. I've got a different purpose. I'm part of the heart meridian. Oh. <laughs> Instead of like, oh God, I gotta hold her up. I gotta make this happen. So it's a whole different relationship, in a sense, with the world around you, through your body, when you stack your, bo your bones into alignment. I mean, Iyengar tried to tell everybody that in his gruff old way. You know, he was trying to say to the world, align your body, align your bones, and you'll align yourself with the world. You'll align yourself with you. You'll align yourself with God. I mean, really, that was his message. Um, and it got kind of distorted along the way, like all things do from the great masters. So if we uh, take the weight into the left side, just take the weight into your left foot, and notice whether your hip goes, uh-oh, and swings way out to the left. Can you keep the hip joint pretty much above the ankle joint? And does your core have to wake up a little bit more to do that? You feel it? And then if you slide the right foot in toward the left foot, and then just dare to lift the right heel up. Now this is where your gaze is going to be important. You want to keep the head in that beautifully natural balanced position over the cervical spine that you found. And so remember the British deportment class. Mom, does that throw you into process totally? Hopefully not. All right, so she's lifting up through the crown of the head. You can feel that lifting all the way through you, can't you? And if you root through that left foot, can you feel that there are some muscles in your outer hip that start to have to really come alive? Does anybody feel that? Your one-legged balances are going to really strengthen your abductors. So that big crescent moon-shaped muscle sort of back here behind the head of the trochanter, that one's going to go, oh, okay. I've got to keep the femoral head above the ankle joint because it wants to flow out to the side, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So those are the muscles that keep that reined in. Now, just see if you can let the right knee rise. And if you can, it doesn't really matter at all. But if the right knee can rise, can you hook over the front of the knee or perhaps behind and bring the pelvis back into its alignment? Now, if you want to get close to a wall and work with one hand on the wall, by all means, do that. What we're going to do is let the knee come higher than the hip to sort of let the psoas lose a bit of that gripping it wants to do. And then can you refine your lumbar curve? Uh-huh. Refine your lumbar curve and see if you can draw those frontal hip points toward the midline. That'll help the muscles deep in the spine keep that lumbar curve for you. And then if you let the hands go, can you keep all of that just as it is, swing the arms out to the side, palms facing forward, swing the arms up into a V for victory. Feel how with the arms in a V shape, V, that you can draw the shoulder blades down the body, lift the breastbone up without poking those front ribs forward, breathe the back ribs wide open, and then release. I love that one. I do that one every day right now. Isn't that nice? Your hands like yeah, yeah, I love it. Your arms were like this. Okay, you didn't see because I was looking at my Yeah. Okay. The leg gets really tired. Yes. Which leg? That you're standing on? Yes. yes. Right here? No. Ah, try letting it go more into here. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, the leg, I mean, the reason I'm doing a lot of balancing right now is that I love it, but I love it because I love how strong the hips feel. 
And the stronger my hips are, the quieter my SI joint is. Hmm, 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 hmm. Yeah. So those of you uh, who want to try to take it one step further, step to the forward edge of your mat. And I'll show you where I like to take this pose. Let me show you this once, and then we'll do it together. So I'm just going to repeat what I did in fast motion. I come up. I situate so I can get everything right. I come to victory. Now from here, and this transition is really tests those abductors where I come through, I step back, and I come to this sort of high lunge pose. It, in the old days, we thought that dumping down into the lunge was the smart thing to do. Now we know that lifting up out of the lunge is the smart thing to do. We knit the frontal hip points toward the midline and see if we can bring back a little bit of that shoulder flexion. And if you get about right here and your shoulders go, uh uh, then come to here. All right? And then what really lifts you out of this pose is to go down into the pelvic floor and draw up. So you're cinching and zipping, which is very much Doug Keller's cinch and zip method of letting the spine rise up in a way that's a very balanced. So we know now that all this kind of foolishness is not helpful. Like, <clears throat> this is the green zone, this is the yellow zone, this is the red zone, Other known as, otherwise known as the stupid zone. It's, it's not only not helpful, but it can be really harmful for a lot of people. So, just don't go there. All right.